Good morning and welcome to Wake Up In The Word. I just can't stop bobbing my head because that song just gets me pumped. I don't know about you, Jens, but it gets oh. me like going. <laughs> I love it. And it is Monday Motivation. So welcome to another episode of Wake Up In The Word. This is episode 115, my friends. Thank you so much for being all the support that you guys have been. We've already got Minda Ayala from Oregon, uh, Salem, Oregon, coming in saying good morning. And so everyone else that is coming in, you know the drill. Type of one if you're coming in live and, and if you're coming in on the replay, hashtag replay so that we can connect with you. We've also got some more platforms that are out there that are watching now. We've got uh, Twitch and we've got um, another like page and YouTube watching live. So we want to welcome you all in. Thank you so much for coming in and taking time out of your morning to watch and see what God is doing in our lives. And so we're going to continue the conversation of family and we titled it today, Faith and Family or Family and Faith. They both work hand in hand. And so I'm going to kick us off in prayer. And you know how we do it. Jens comes on in and she continues to rock the vibe. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. And we got Mark saying good morning. So good morning, Mark. Thank you so much. So let's dive right into prayer. Father, we just thank you this morning for your awesomeness. God, I thank you that you have woken us up and that you have helped us and that you have blessed us today to breathe, to see, to have sense, to hear, uh, be able to walk. And those that um, are struggling, we know that you have a plan and a purpose, Father. And so I just pray right now, Father, that you would bless this broadcast, that you would bless everyone and prepare our hearts to receive a word from you. Because I don't know exactly what Jen's is going to say. and She doesn't know exactly what I'm going to say or anyone here. And we don't know what the comments are going to be, but we know that you are, are, are preparing all of our hearts corporately and individually. And I pray this morning that there is a word for one specific person today. If we can impact one person today and help them be set free in their process and understand the keys to success for their life through your word, then Father, that right there is enough for us. And so, Father, we invite you in this atmosphere. We ask that you would have your way and we give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, um, I'm so excited. I'm so excited because what what our goal is, our own personal goal is that we get closer to the Lord. I mean, that's our own personal goal. Whether you made that your goal yet or not, I promise you, you're going to get to that. You're going to get to that goal, you know, because with, in life, especially when you're dealing with anything um, that is getting you closer to, to God, is you start to realize that everything is spiritual unto the Lord. You know, you start to realize that at first, you really do separate it. And I'm going to say that I've experienced that myself where this is work. This is my faith. You know, this is the family. These are my friends the, you know, you, you just do. Well, then you start, you start waking up in the word every morning. You start praying every morning, uh, whether, whether you mean to or not, you know, God's working on you. It's, it's kind of like if you're not close to the Lord, you got your back to him. And, you know, he's just kind of like tapping you, you know, he's like, and you're like, what? <laughs> you know, you're, you don't know, but then you meet somebody and, and, and they're close to the Lord, or maybe you just start thinking about things and you start praying and because he's always working on us because he's, we're his children and he loves us. And then we start listening to this crazy wake up in the word and, you know, you start liking it and you're watching the replay. And all of a sudden, you start to realize that everything is spiritual unto the Lord, that God loves us so much that he put us in families. And once we are in a family, and remember, we come to earth in a family. He does not send any of us here. He, the in, intent is that we're always to be protected and we're always to be loved. That's not always how it is. But that is God's plan. So when last week we talked a lot about the um, the kingdom family and how, you know, we, we come and we're born to a biological family. Hopefully we marry into a family or we we start to build a, a family of close friends and maybe some other family members. 
you know, we got that, that unit and then we've got the kingdom family. Well, this week we're going to talk more about that, about that, that family that you're married into or that you create with, through God's guidance. So it's not your blood family, but you become that family. And there's a responsibility that we have regarding our families. And Pastor Paul is going to talk to us uh, a little bit about uh, a family that we've got, you know, great examples through the scriptures. And we're going to let Paul just, Pastor Paul, jump right on into that. It's start in Ruth. Awesome. Awesome. You know, um, I know Pam knows this, but yesterday we were we were talking about that in our our a Zoom church. And so I'm going to put that scripture up that I want to land today. And it's Ruth chapter one, 16 through 18. And it's something that that's that really burns in my heart because in a good way, because, you know, yesterday's service was 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 really our message was thanking our church family, our online family. And, you know, people like Jens and, and E and, and Mark and Pam and, and Minda, those that are praying for us, those that we can rely on to be able to go through this journey, <clears throat> even though we may not be talking every day and, and we may not be local, but there's that prayer. And so yesterday we were talking about the book of Ruth and how this story was so dynamic. It was so powerful because Ruth witnessed her mother-in-law, Naomi, go through some stuff in life, but she chose, <clears throat> excuse me, she chose to follow her anyway. So the backdrop to this story, before we even get to this verse, is Naomi and her husband moved to Moab from Bethlehem because there was this famine. They go to Moab. Moab turns out to be this place of desolation. There's a lot of wicked there. There's a lot of stuff going on. Well, through the process of, of time, Naomi's husband dies. So she's left with two sons. Both sons marry a woman from Moab. Both sons die after, I believe, 10 years. So this whole place that, that they went to lodge and to build a family and a legacy with, everything was torn apart. There was nothing but death. And so Ruth and the sister-in-law Orpah, um, they were going with her. Naomi stopped and said, listen, I know that you guys want to honor the, the uh, Jewish culture, but I'm not going to have any more kids. So stop following me and go find husbands for, for yourself. Go and live your life. Orpah left, Ruth clung. Now here's, here's the powerful part about that is that she clung to somebody that she never saw in her eyes monetary blessings. She never saw financial blessings. She never saw anything that was like, oh my God, I want to serve you. Here's what she saw. She saw faith that no matter what she went through, she saw faith. And so this is her words. She said, listen, entreat me not to leave. Pretty much beg me because where you go, I will go where you live. I will live. Your people will be my people who you serve. I serve your God will be my God. And where you die, I will die. And then she also said, the Lord do to me also and more, if anything but death parts you and me. That's a very powerful statement from this, this girl who didn't have to, this young woman who didn't have to follow her mother-in-law any longer, but she saw something in her mother that drew her faith to have faith in a God that her mother-in-law served. So that faith brought their friendship even closer. And so when we look at our, our everyday life, with the people that are faithful, the people that are living in faith, that walk in faith, and you're watching them and you're rocking with them and you cling to them, there is a reason why we cling to people <clears throat> because of the faith that we see in them, even in the things that we don't see happening. Like how, how do you have so much faith 
it's not even so much like in my life, I was never like, well, I don't really want to follow that person because they have faith. I'm like, why do you have so much faith? Like there's not everything is good in your life, but why do you have so much faith? I want to know, and I want to have what you have. One of my best friends years ago was diagnosed with illness and she was pretty much on her way out. And she came to a church service and sang worship. And that was the day that I gave my heart to the Lord because there was something inside of her that even though she felt those hours were the last hours of, of her life, that drew my faith close to her. And I'm, I'm here to tell you today that she lived, she had more kids, she got married, and she's still rocking the gospel. Why? Because of her faith. And that's where faith and family comes in. And that's where it's imperative, like you said, Jens, that everything that we do, everything is spiritual unto the Lord. We don't separate it from business. We, we don't separate it from the marriage. We don't separate. We keep it all together, putting God. Some say, number one, I say, put God as center of everything that we do and being sure that everything that we do in our workplace is as unto the Lord. That's what the Bible says. Work as if unto the Lord, period. And so that's where it's imperative. And I know you got some stuff to say because this is where it's it's very vital that our friends become our family because the Bible even says a friend will stick closer than a brother. So that's what I got. <laughs> you know, what, what I love about this story is, is that, you know, like you said, here's Naomi. She's got Oprah and she has uh, she has Ruth as daughter-in-laws. The her sons have passed away. And she's basically sending them both away and say, you know, hey, you know, go. Um, because you don't have to stay with me. You know, you don't need to stay with me. Um, but and Oprah went, but like you said, Ruth cleaved to her. And it, it makes me, one of the things I say all the time, you know, we've got five kids. It's a blended family. We've got five kids and um, all five kids are different. And I think it, it's such a beautiful, a beautiful example, how God shows us through the stories in the scriptures that we're all different. We are all different and we all have a purpose. And just like you said, we're, we're sharing how, how Ruth was cleaving to, to Naomi because of her faith. And there was a reason. And, you know, I say all the time, I don't know why God does what he does. I don't know. But I know he has a reason. And I know his reasons are. Uh, are, are much better than my reasons. And it's not my place to question God, you know, why are you doing this? It's just my responsibility to love. You know, you go back again to the greatest two commandments. The greatest commandment is that we love our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. And the second is we love everyone else as ourselves. So that means it's not our place to try to trip up God's plans. It's not our place to try to tell God his plans aren't right and ours is better. It's not our, it's not our place to, to get mad if things don't go, quote, unquote, our way. Hey, no. It, you, we get to a point where we live in faith, where we say we'll love all of our family. You know, it was interesting because I was actually listening to a, a, a to a video yesterday and it was talking about how, you know, some people, some people are always looking for their soulmates. Um, and, you know, this, this guy was talking about how, you know, we can have more than one soulmate because we are consumed with love and other people are consumed with love. But once you get married, 
you create your soulmate. So that's your soulmate because that's the one you marry. So you don't have to stop. You can stop looking. You know, you don't need to look anymore because you got now you you create that soulmate together. And it really made me think of, you know, just the our families in general is that it's our responsibility that that we love our families, that we love our, you know, the, the Ten Commandments honor thy father and mother. And it's the only commandment that has a blessing attached to that commandment. Love thy father and mother so that your days will be long on the earth. So, you know, you got all the, you know, you got 10 commandments, you got nine other commandments, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. And then it's honor thy father and mother because it's the family unit so your days will be long on the earth and it's all based in love so of course Ruth wanted to stay with Naomi out of love and you know what Naomi was with her out of love and and even though all your children all your family members they don't all act the the same way it's oh it's that's how it's supposed to be you know and in and I'm telling you one of the things that I think this probably might be a gift that women have um but of all the five kids I don't treat all five kids the same because all five kids are different you know all five kids have different needs all five kids are at different places in their journeys all five kids are special and unique and we can't judge and compare them to one another. Just like we can't judge and compare ourselves to other people. You know, we might be looking at somebody else thinking they got it all together and they're looking at you thinking, man, I wish I was them. They got it all together. But you got to realize that each one of our walks is a little different for a purpose in God and and we've got to just accept the responsibilities and we've got to always go back to those two commandments. And like Pastor Paul says, everything else is commentary. So, you know, that's really what's weighing on my heart is, is to love all of our family members, to create those soulmates, to create those special, those special bonds and don't try to treat everyone the same with with what their situation should be but treat everyone the same and the amount of love and kindness and patience and long suffering and faith and example that's what should be the same because that's what we've been commanded to do not tell god how he wants his individual children being treated or what they should do in their life. That's God's job. Our, our job's to Amen. love. Amen. You know, when you when you go further in this story, it just it just blows me away because when her and Ruth walked into that town, that town of Bethlehem, um, all the city, it says that all the city was excited because of them. And the women and the women said, is this Naomi? And now this is Naomi talking. Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi, since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? Now watch this. This is where Naomi, this is where Ruth was able to see the realness of Naomi. Just what you said earlier about seeing people holding things together. Like, how do you hold this whole thing together? She held it together until she got to the place where she was tired of hearing joy. She was tired of hearing peace. She was tired of hearing all these great things about me. She finally got real, not only with Ruth, 
but with those that were welcoming her home saying, listen, you have no idea what I've gone through to hold this faith. You have no idea what I had to deal with to get to this place. Now, if we go further into the story, maybe we could touch on that on another day, but the promises that came in both their lives because both women decided to go to this place called Bethlehem. They both decided, Naomi said, I'm going back home where it's fruitful because God has blessed the land again. And Ruth followed her because Ruth really, truly, just like Mark says, she cut all ties. But at the same time, she's still human, said there ain't nothing here. It's time for me to go. There's nothing fruitful here. There's nothing multiplying here. So wherever she goes, I will go. Whatever God she serves, I will serve. And I'm going to cling to that faith. And when they get there, then we know the whole story. I suggest that whoever hasn't read the story, I believe it's four chapters. It's a it's a simple read. You can get it done in an hour. <clears throat> this is powerful. So she goes, she begins to start gleaning off of the fields, taking the stuff from the corners. And this, this rock star dude that's the owner of all this land said, who is this woman? So now she is taken in by a husband and now she's giving birth to a baby and that baby becomes Naomi's grandchild at the same time because she still clung to her. And through this bloodline comes Jesus Christ. And this is where we have to understand that, that it is imperative that, that no matter what is going on in our life, there is that answer that leads us to Jesus. Ruth had no idea that she was going to be the great grandmother of somebody that would be giving birth. You follow what I'm saying? But she clung and she followed because she knew there was something about Naomi that she just had to have. And when we cling to that faith, that faith, the size of a mustard seed, no matter what we're going through. And I'm preaching to myself this morning because this transition, this move isn't easy. It is not an easy thing. We are not just moving down the street. We don't have a million dollars just be able to go buy a house and worry about this house later. It is a huge transition. And I've got to psych myself up every single day to say, all right, God, I'm putting my faith before you. I got my prayer card. I pull it out and I say, all right, God, I'm going down my list. I believe that you are doing this, but help me because the Bible even says that in the moments where the father had the son that was throwing himself in the fire was demonic. Jesus didn't even address the demon. Jesus addressed the father. Do you believe? Do you believe? He didn't address the demon. He addressed the father. Do you believe? He said, yes. However, help me in my unbelief. So what does that mean? We go through those seasons and we go through those times of where even though we believe, we still don't believe. <laughs> We're like, I'm believing but doggone it, I still got this other thought coming into my mind going, what if, right? So this is, this is where it's, it's so powerful that we do have those, those, those families that are friends. Faith, family, because it's so, so imperative that when we look at this community of believers that is now becoming family, right? This is where we're being lifted up in prayer. This is where they're rocking with us, even though they're not local and we don't get to touch them personally and see each other eyeball to eyeball. I know without a shadow of a doubt that we've got a Mark Latham praying for wake up in the word, that we've got a Minda praying for the wake up in the word, that we've got a Pam Smart, that we've got a Dave Johnson, that we've got an Amy Roberts, that we've got a Diane Castle, that we've got a community of believer. And if I left any names out, you all know who you are. But what I'm saying is, I know without a shadow of a doubt that we can call on our friends and say, listen, I need some help. I need some prayer. I need some advice. Help me in this unbelief that I have. And this is where Naomi and Ruth's story is so, so powerful because so many times we look at the story of Ruth because she got the husband, but nobody really looks at the pain and the sorrow that Naomi had to go through. Because of the title of the book, it's called Ruth. It's not called Naomi. So everyone focuses on, on Ruth. But when you look at Naomi, this woman was a rock star. She helped Ruth 
said, okay, so you're going to go work the fields. Okay. Do this. Who gave you this? Okay. So since they gave you this, hmm, who is this person? Okay. Well, here's what you got to do next. And when you do that, there's going to be a loophole and then you're going to be able to be with that guy and you're going to still be able to have these children. So, so it, it takes the community of believers. That's the point that I'm getting at. It takes the community of believers that one may not have hope or one may not even know the promise, but sometimes in our friendships, just do what the person's telling you to do instead of mm -hmm. trying to figure out all oh, the, the answer. Well, well, why should we just trust what I'm saying? Just trust what I'm doing. And so I just encourage everyone here today to continue to stay faithful. Just like Mark just put up the seed of Abraham moving toward the birth of Christ. God had a plan from the beginning. He had a plan of redemption. He had a plan of power. He had that plan. So stay faithful, continue to rock this thing called life. So Jen's do you think? Well, you know, I, everything in this story about Ruth and Naomi um, and in Oprah, too, you know, it shows us that that the way God works is God, because he has a plan for you and he has a purpose. We are we're drawn to certain people. And listen, you know, I think about my own, you know, my first husband and his mother. And I was drawn to his mother. And even after my, my first husband and I divorced, I'm still very close to his mother. And because I was drawn. So what does that tell me? That tells me that the Lord wants her in my life and wants me in her life for not just a season there's there it so you know you got to realize one of the things i say and i've taught my kids all the time is you know you're going to hear sad stories all your life and there's sad stories are sad stories but then there's going to be a sad story where god touches your heart and he says go help you know he doesn't tell us to help every single person that would be insane you're not responsible for helping everyone you're responsible for helping yourself helping your family and helping those that god tells you to help we're drawn to people whether they're our family or they're not and we i believe with all my heart and it's one of the reasons that draw it drives me is I believe with all my heart at my personal day of judgment, I will be held accountable for the things that I did or did not do. And last Monday, when we were on that prayer call with over a thousand people praying for our country, praying for, for our, our leaders, praying for truth and righteousness, we don't, you know, you, we don't care the outcome. We want God's will. When you get to that place in your life where you're submitting and you just want God's will, that's when you, God really starts to work on you. And I, I'm telling you, you know, and I know I've said it, Amy Roberts has come up on this, po on this podcast so many times saying, we have to repent for what we've done. You know, we have to repent for what we've done. And um, and I'm thinking I had not repented for what I've done, but I haven't been repenting for what I've done. That's allowed the evil to take such strong hold of our land. And, I, and I'm telling you last night, you know, I'm, I don't watch a bunch of TV. I'm pretty. I'm pretty focused on what it is that I do. Um, you know, you know, I, I like a couple things. I don't like a lot of things. And, you know, last night Dave wanted to watch a movie or he wanted to watch a, an episode. And, you know, we got rid of Netflix. Um, as soon as we heard about cuties, we said, no, we don't want to support that. And we're not going to support that because that's contrary to, to God's will. 
And I'm telling you what, we, you know, you know how it is. You turn something on, you don't know what it is. And it was, it was okay. And then the minute it got to a place that was not good, I'm telling you that Holy Spirit from my head to my toes, I said, turn this off, turn this off. I don't want to, you know, it was so strong, but it also made me so happy because it made me know that I'm closer to the Lord, that the Holy Spirit is protecting me. And we have to always, always be at a place in our personal walk with the Lord that when we see injustice, when we see things that aren't right, when we see Satan's hand working in other people's lives, that we feel convicted enough in love to say something. You know, uh, Diane Castle, who's part of our, our you know social media ministry family here, she always says, you know, if you see something, you say something. If you, if you see something, you say something. Just like this scripture right here, 8, John 8, 32, you will know the truth and the truth shall, shut you, shall, shall set you free. It's like when we see our, our fellow brothers and sisters in love, we've got to say, we don't want the, we don't want the, the end result that could come your way by going down that path. Now we love you and we're no better. So, you know, if that's a choice you make, that's a choice you make. That doesn't mean we don't love you, but we love you so much. We want to share. And, you know, God's really even changing the way that I want to speak to people because he's helping me understand that he wants us speaking to one another in love always and not to question what he wants for his children, but just to treat one another in love and realize that, listen, even though we got crazy stuff going on in the world, we have to prepare ourselves spiritually, prepare our families spiritually, prepare the, the other nucleus family that we have. And we've got to just keep doing our best. God knows when we're giving our all. And God knows when we're not. And we do too. We do too. So don't beat yourself up and, and realize that the difference Jesus Christ has made up. He's made up the rest. So we're going to let everybody go off. We're going to end in some prayer. And remember, share this out, please. You know, do a watch party when we're doing live, if you're watching live. If you watch the replay and it touched you, Share it out, you know, and share what touched your heart because God's not just using this for you. If it's touching your heart and if it was a message that that resonated with you, it's going to it's going to touch someone else's heart Um, share it directly in messenger and invite people to join our community. Listen, we can. I'm telling you, we can make a positive difference in our lives and in this world in which we live. We can be a part of the, um, the, our, our land healing. We can, um, and I'm seeing it in, you know, every place I'm looking and, and I'm just so grateful for that. So let's, let's end. Our father, we are so grateful for this day. Father, we are grateful for another opportunity to wake up and choose Choose this day who we're going to serve. Choose this day what we're going to do. Choose this day how we're going to impact people's lives. And we know, Father, that we cannot give through a, with an empty, an empty vessel. We've got to fill our vessels up. So we know, Father, that we've got to wake up in the Word, and we're grateful. We're grateful for this community of believers because we know, Father, that it's all of the energy. Every single bit of energy and love that's coming from every one of our community of believers, whether they're watching live or whether they're watching on the, the replay, 
It's all of our collective love. It's all of our collective faith. And it's that collective love and faith that's helping strengthen each other. Because we know, Father, that that is your will. That is your way. You want us together in families. You want us to be protected. You want us to be strengthened and fortified. You want us to be able to go out and be your disciples. We know, Father, that we've got to be blessing one another. We know that we've got to be sharing your word. We know that, Father, because it says in the word. It says in your word. We know, Father, that every story, every example, every every commandment, every bit of guidance that is placed in your word, Father, it was intentional. These are intentional stories that we learn from. These are intentional gospel truths that we need to understand and apply in our lives right now. Because we know, Father, that you are the same yesterday and forever, today and forever. You will never change. You cannot lie. And what we see here and what we read in the scriptures, we know it is truth and it's your will. We pray, Father, that we will have a desire to treat every one of our children, every one of your children, every one of our fellow brothers and sisters with love. And that we don't think that it's our responsibility to to create their world and their 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 life that's their responsibility you've given all of us the 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 gift of free agency and you're the one that's supposed to help guide that and you will guide us but if we focus on the first two commandments which are the greatest commandments loving you with all our mind heart and strength and in soul and loving our our neighbors as ourselves we know father that that currency in heaven the currency with you of love will grow and it will multiply and it will swell within our souls and in our hearts and that we'll be able to to make the impact that we need to on this land please bless this land father forgive us for our sins we repent of all of our wrongdoing that has allowed the world in this country to get where it is. We pray, Father, for, for, for rest, restoration. We pray, Father, for restoration, that our land will be restored to truth and righteousness, and we will be a part of that. We will take an active role in helping save our country. And we say these things, Father, and ask these blessings and all other blessings that you see we stand in need of at this time. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. All righty, everybody. Now that y'all get on your ways because (laughs) we went over a little bit, but we love you so much. And until we meet again tomorrow, be big, be bold, and most importantly, be you. Bye-bye, everybody.